So, this week's been interesting, hasn't it? Hello everybody, I am Ace Creeper and today I'm back with a brand new video for the first time in like a week. That's, that's, that's a record for me, I think. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a busy week, as probably most of you already know. If you don't, then we're going to talk about some stuff in this video that might definitely certainly interest a few of you Doctor Who fans. So, first of all, let's get the basic news out of the way from yesterday. The airtime for Doctor Who Series 11 was announced. Um, the Woman Who Fell to Earth will be airing on BBC One UK at 6.45pm. That's quarter to seven. Um, and it'll finish probably just before eight o'clock, I think, if I'm getting my timings right. Um, in the US, it's quarter to two, so 1.45 p.m., and that's EST time. So whatever your local area is, convert it to that. If you don't live in the US and you don't live in the UK, um, I believe you can check online for your local listings and you can kind of find that. This was officially confirmed by the BBC. This wasn't some made-up rumour or advert that appeared that someone may or may not have photoshopped. This is genuine. Comes from the Doctor Who Twitter account. Comes from the BBC Twitter account. It's happening. 6.45, October 7th, BBC One for the UK. Be there or be triangle. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, on to the proper main big massive news. Um, many of you probably already know uh, that I was invited to attend the premiere of the new series of Doctor Who. Meaning, yes, I have seen The Woman Who Fell to Earth. But before I talk about my thoughts on the episode, spoiler free of course, um, I'm going to just talk about the premiere as a whole. So it started out, we went on the red carpet, there's a few photos there, I tried to get as many as possible, as well as some great footage. We saw um, Jodie Whittaker and Mandip Gill kind of up close getting some photos on the red carpet, which was um, quite amazing really. Um, we then made our way to the cinema area, got our popcorn and drink, and sat down and watched the episode. Um, there was a and a right after where members of the audience got to ask the cast some questions, so that was really interesting. And then you got the chance to walk around, say hi to people, meet whoever's there and get a few photos. Um, as I did, the TARDIS prop was there, so many of you probably saw that I got a photo with that. I also met Chris Chibnall, Bradley Walsh, Mandip Gill and uh, Segon Akinola. I hope I'm not butchering that because I really feel like I might. Um, but yeah, they were all great and all lovely, lovely people. Whilst I was in Sheffield, I thought it was a great opportunity to pop over to Park Hill Flats, which is less than a mile away, uh, to just go and find where they were filming earlier in the year for this series. Got a couple of photos there, and that was pretty much it before we made our way home. But I'm a YouTuber. I've got to kind of talk about my thoughts on the episode, haven't I? So yeah, let's do that. So yeah, the episode, The Woman Who Fell to Earth. Was it good? Was it bad? What can I say? What can't I say? Well, obviously, I can't give anything remotely spoilery out, which, to be honest, I think is a pretty good thing, because this episode is one of those ones that the less you know, I feel the more you enjoy it. You're in for a real treat when this airs, and that's my entire honesty. The episode feels at the start of a brand new era. Very new, very cinematic, reminding me of some very beautiful looking TV shows on Netflix and on the air at the moment. I mean, like, Stranger Things, Black Mirror come to mind in terms of visuals. It is spectacular looking. And the story was very entertaining as well. It made me laugh, jump with shock, and genuinely made me feel quite emotional at times. And to be honest, for the first episode, with a brand new cast, brand new characters, in the space of a normal episode time, that's quite impressive. I noticed Beth from the Time Team mentioned something about loving the new theme tune on Twitter, so yeah, it's probably worth saying that I can't really go into specifics about it, but to me, fans of both Classic and Modern Who will adore this brand new theme tune, Sego Nakanola. Again, probably butchering your name, but you're a genius! He's genuinely done Delia Derbyshire and the 1960s Radiophonics Workshop. Bafflingly proud. He's done an amazing job and I can't wait for you all to hear that. The characters of Ryan and Yasmin were amazing, actually. They were relatable and kind of a lot of fun to finally see them both on screen. They're both fabulous actors who are able to really bring their characters to life on the screen, which is definitely, definitely a compliment. Graham and Grace also follow suit in this episode, being really fun and interesting characters, both a delight to see on the screen. 
Before the final character, I'd love to say something quickly about Chris Chibnall. Having watched all of Chris's previous work on Doctor Who, Life on Mars, and a little bit of Torchwood, as well as pretty much every series of Broadchurch, which I absolutely loved, I didn't know what to expect from this new series of Doctor Who. But my god did this man deliver. All the promises he made um, earlier on this year have been absolutely achieved. Like, with this first episode, I was in there grinning away from beginning to end and I don't know what to say, the script, the story, everything with this episode is so tight, every right detail squeezed pretty much into perfection. Chibnall has really proved himself with the woman who fell to earth and he should be incredibly proud. It's a great story which genuinely feels like a mixture of all different eras of Who and for that, thank you Chris. Finally, the Doctor, Jodie Whittaker. Well, um, where do I start with this? Right, well, she's brilliant. She was amazing. I, I, I can't even, like, she jumped into this episode instantly. I felt the Doctor. She is the Doctor, and you sense that almost straight away. She took to the role very quick and very well. She got a nice mix of her predecessors in there, as well as adding something really unique and brand new to her performance. Jodie is shaping up to be a genuinely spectacular Doctor, and I absolutely mean that. And that's pretty much it. I'd love to be able to tell you more, but obviously, I mean, why would I? You have got something wonderful coming up, and you don't want to miss it. You really, really don't. And you don't want it spoiled either. I think it's genuinely one of those things that, if it's spoiled, it just, it really does just ruin it this time. Um, so well done to the cast and everything for keeping it completely under wraps. Very, very secretive. Um, and it's genuinely paid off quite well. Um, in terms of content over the next few weeks, I can't really make any predictions about episode 1, obviously because I've seen it, so don't expect much like that, but there'll be some general series 11 stuff as the weeks commence. Um, I'm very, very excited um, about the way this channel's coming along recently, actually. So, yeah, hopefully there'll be some more content on your way very, very soon regarding some other elements of Series 11 and possibly some reviews and other sorts of wonderful things. Whatever I can pull out of my magic hat. <laughs> I never said that. I never thought I'd say that on a YouTube video, but I did. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comment below for your suggestions in the future. Check out the Patreon below if you want to support the channel. Check out the Discord server if you want to gush about Doctor Who 24-7 like myself. All my social media links are also down in the description below as well. I hope you're having a lovely day, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. What am I doing with my hands? I don't even know. I'm turning to Matt Smith.